Hi guys and welcome back to Unfrazzle Me. My name is Natalie Meyer. I am a running enthusiast. I've been running for 14 to 15 years and I'm here to share with you everything I know about running just to make your own journey a little bit easier. Um, what we are discussing today is um, how to prevent injury while you're out there running. And I have maybe four points that um, I'd like to share with you, four things that I keep in mind um, to help me make sure I'm running safely and appropriately avoiding injury. The first thing that I would really recommend for all of you is to know the route or the course that you plan on running. Um, if you are able to drive the course or the route that you think you would like to run next, um, I think that is very helpful, just learning the terrain and the landscape and knowing um, if there's a paved path the entire way, a sidewalk, or whether you'll be running in the street for part of it, having to jump out of the way of traffic. Um, just knowing the route, I find very helpful because if you are faced with something unexpected um, and you're not prepared and just you know, dodging cars, <laughs> God forbid, um, the risk of injury goes up, you know, the, the likelihood that you're going to sprain or twist an ankle definitely goes up at that point. Um, two things that can help you plan a course or decide where to run would be Strava and Garmin. Um, those apps out there, uh, other runners will upload courses that they feel are good or appropriate for other runners to use. And so they, they've already been tested. So those are, um, I guess, a nice, easy way to kind of cheat the system <laughs> to know, uh, okay, this, this is a good running path. Let's go ahead and try this one um, if you want to change it up and try a, a different course than usual. Um, strength and flexibility is also something that I know you probably hear a lot, but a lot of runners do not commit to it. And it's huge, especially in the long term. Um, if, you know, just looking at the human body, every muscle system supports the next. And if you're weak in one area, it's going to cause ultimately injury to another part of your body. Um, you want to make sure that you have a strong lower back, a strong midsection, um, your quadriceps and hamstrings that they are strengthened as much as possible to support your knees um, and your joints. If you have strong muscles, you're really saving your joints a lot of stress. Um, so strength and flexibility, no matter what, just do whatever it takes to work it into your weekly regimen with your running. Um, stretch before and after. I know you've heard that before, but again, a lot of people don't do it and it's something that you really do need to incorporate to save your body and, you know, over a massive amount of time. <laughs> you know, if, if this is the long game, if this is the sport that you've chosen, then you need to do it appropriately to save your body. Um, you don't want to be too rough on it. It's the only one you got. And then resting. Um, of course, doing races and competing is fun. Having the little bit of friendly rivalry, um, it's definitely fun. Um, it's recommended not to do more than one marathon a month. Um, and even if you are doing shorter distances and you're doing them um, uh, back to back one week from the next, again, you have to have a resting period in there to where your muscles in your body, your joints, are just able to kind of heal and recover and um, get a break from, you know, the, the pressure and the strain that we place on them. Um, the last tip I have for you, which you've heard me talk about a number of times already, is having the appropriate pair of shoes. Go to an actual shoe store made for runners. Um, I'm sure there is one in your area. Um, I know there's one called Fleet Feet and they have multiple locations through the US. Um, and again, like uh, New Balance stores or Asics or Saucony, you know, just seeking out those stores. There's going to be an expert within those shoe stores to um, find a shoe that is right for how you run, the, the shape of your foot, how your foot lands on the ground. 
Also making sure that your shoes are tied correctly. Um, there are different ways to lace your shoe and tie them for the shape of your foot. So that's something to look into as well. Um, and then of course to replace those shoes every 200 to 300 miles. Um, some people keep their shoes as long as, you know, 500 miles, but they start to lose a little bit of support. So I, I'd really um, urge you to stick closer to the 200 to 300 uh, mile mark with um, how long you, you hold on to those pair of running shoes. So uh, those are my four little pieces of advice um, to know your course, utilize um, strength and flexibility, add them into your regimen to have a resting period in between events that you're doing and to take care of your feet, make sure you have the appropriate shoes and you're tying them appropriately, all of those good things. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions or if you have anything to add um, that would help other runners, please comment below and please um, include those little tidbits, those uh, pieces of advice. Um, if you are a seasoned runner, please let the rest of us know what's worked for you as well. I'd really appreciate it. And if you are watching this on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If this video has been helpful, give it a thumbs up and like the video. That helps me on my part create more of them. And um, it, if you hit the subscribe button, you will um, be clued in as, as to when another uh, running video comes up. So I guess that's it for now. If you want to follow more of my personal running journey, you can find me on Instagram at unfrazzleme. Um, I am a mom runner and running has become my life after having um, our, our little baby girl. So that's where I hang out. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time today. God bless and happy running. Bye-bye.